Welcome back. Now, on tonight's Investment 101, we tell you about investing offshore, essentially, how to invest some of your money on markets outside of South Africa. I went off to look at the different options available to you and, of course, the benefits and the risks. Any financial planner will tell you that when investing, it's important to not have all your eggs in one basket. This is what's called diversification in investment speak. There are many ways to achieve this. You can put your money in different asset classes like bonds, shares, property or the good old bank. But South Africans are increasingly looking offshore. At this point in time as well, we've got international markets and international economies performing a lot better than South Africa. And so in that respect, I think at this point in time, it certainly also makes sense for South African investors. Uh, also, I guess, when the RAND depreciates, you tend to get some of that benefit as well in terms of being in an offshore jurisdiction. But as with any investment, there are risks associated with taking your money offshore. A lot of South Africans don't know that much about international investing and so as a result there's a much higher or steeper learning curve. Uh, there are also I guess additional costs from a South African perspective bearing in mind we've got exchange control so you don't have this unconstrained ability to invest offshore. Exchange control restrictions limit the amount of money investors can take outside the country. Up to 4 million rand may be invested offshore every year. This is all subject to tax clearance from the Reserve Bank and up to 1 million rand a year without tax clearance, although the investment needs to be registered with the Reserve Bank. A retail investor with maybe a thousand rand to spare has numerous instruments that you can use to invest offshore. The first one would be through what is called an asset swap fund. Uh, that is a, a unit trust, a collective investment scheme. Uh, and you'd find that at any of the major investment houses in South Africa. Effectively, as a South African, you'd put your money into a South African domiciled fund. And that fund would then invest on your behalf in international markets. The key distinction is when you actually invest and then divest from that fund, you're putting in rands and you're getting rands out as well. So what you're getting is effectively the performance of the international market and then also the exchange rate overlay on that. The second mechanism would be through exchange traded funds, which suits investors who are more passive in nature. These you can get through your stockbroker. As with any investment, you must consult your financial advisor before making any decision. Now, the dramatic drop in Sassel's share price has some investors worried. Sassel's stock has come off a high of 645 rand 10 cents a share in June last year, when the price of Brent crude was around $116.12 a barrel. Today, Sassel's shares end a trade at 381 rand 80 a share, with Brent trading at around $48 a barrel. What then about the over 200,000 Sassel and Zala shareholders? They, of course, received their first dividend last year. The BE scheme still has a pile of debt. Mao Dilanzwane of Luhuma Capital is here to help us answer that question. Hi, Mao Woody, thanks for your time Thank this you. evening. Over 200,000 investors in the scheme watching this share price Indeed. falling. Before we talk about the impact of the share price itself, yeah. let's just revisit quickly what the scheme um, was that was launched in 2000. 100%. I think it's, it's, a, it's a gloomy picture, I must say, for those. Uh, uh, investors who uh, obviously took part in the uh, in the in the black economic in, uh, in investment scheme uh, back in 2008 when it was launched. Basically, when it was launched, um, the scheme comprised of two. Uh, it was two schemes. Uh, the one portion was the uh, cash invitation. In other words, you actually bought the shares, the actual shares of Sasol yeah. at a discounted price. Yes. And the other portion was the funded uh, invitation, where uh, I think the price was around 22 rand. Uh, that they had to pay for share price, which was uh, at trading at the time at 400 rand. Yeah. So they had got a massive discount, but that discount was not for free. They had to fund it with a debt. Yeah. So they currently, for the duration of, of, of the scheme, they're currently paying, uh, uh, paying off that debt with the dividends that they're receiving yeah. from, from, from Sasol. Um, okay. So you're sitting with debt, right? And we are in a an interest rate rising environment. I mean, we're not expecting a rate hike, um, you know, in the next, um, in, the, in the short term because of what the oil price has done. But that must be having an effect on debt repayment. No, most definitely. I think the, 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 the big negatives for, for that uh, funded, po uh, funded invitation uh, was the interest rates uh, risk, which is obviously a big uh, risk for them if interest rates start uh, rising. Of course, that means the repayment on that particular debt uh, increases. But also the other uh, 
uh, risks, of course, is uh, the very same thing that affect the cash invitation, which is your oil price and the currency risk. Uh, as well, you know, if the rent uh, depreciates or, uh, or appreciates quite significantly in a case of uh, Sasol, that impacts negatively on the share price. Uh, so the risks are exactly that the uh, interest rates. At this point in time, I think we have not really moved too far away from the interest mm -hmm. rates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it hasn't really impacted them. The big, the big impact comes from uh, the recent fall in the, uh, in the oil price. Let's talk about the stock. Coming down from what? what? What was the number I quoted? 645. Absolutely. I mean, it's a drop of over 50%, or oh, close to 50% in a period of, of six months. That's a dramatic uh, uh, fall. I must say, it's a mirror image of what has actually transpired in the oil, in the oil, uh, the oil uh, on the oil market. Mm. You know, the oil price took a nosedive uh, to currently just trading below $50 a, a barrel. You know, that's the story of, obviously, things that have, we've been talking about, you know, the a slowdown in the global economic uh, uh, growth. And uh, because of China slowing down, uh, a big impact there. But I think the recent fall that we saw uh, beginning of this year with two days of consecutive 5% drops, yeah. it's as a result of what is happening, a tug of war between Saudi Arabia and the U.S. Saudi Arabia wants to take out uh, that, uh, you know, the uh, shale uh, uh, the sector shale or the industry. shale industry in the U.S. And I think they're really, really aggressively uh, coming out very strong to push them down. And that's what has actually led to this uh, recent uh, drop in the, in the oil price. How long could this uh, play itself out? Because obviously Saudi Arabia is the, the most influential member of OPEC, but not the only one. Surely the others are going to feel a lot more pain and start to actually push them for some sort of action on cutting output. Indeed. Um, look, I might be very uh, controversial here, but I think that's basically the function of a cartel. Um, I don't think, if you listen to what has been happening, the other members are quiet. It's because, you know, they hedge themselves far out, you know, 12 months uh, out. So they're currently still okay at this present moment because they've hedged themselves. Yeah. So that's why they're not actually saying anything. And they're actually liking what, what is happening, which is to try and take out the entire U.S., uh, you know, shale, shale industry. Um, those are the ones that cannot sustain, of course, because these are individual companies that are, that are operating and they, most of them are highly leveraged. Yeah. So they will not sustain these current pro, uh, uh, prices and they are the, li the most, li lo most likely to, to blink first. So that tug of war, it's likely to be won by the OPEC members. I mean, my, my, I'm thinking here of countries whose, whose entire fiscus depends on, on oil revenue. So there may just be some pressure from citizens as No, well. certainly. But I think that pressure will be felt out a year from now, not necessarily at this current moment. And I think by that time, you know, everything... Uh, would have actually resolved uh, itself and we'll start uh, seeing the, sh the oil price. I don't think the okay. oil price will remain at this low level for, so for a long time. So investors, Mrs. Fingers. I think it's, 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 it's going to be, there's a silver lining at the, okay. at the end of this dark cloud. I'm going to hold you to that. Maudi <laughs> Lintwane is with Luhumo Capital. Our daily question and answer feature is up next. Stay with us.